Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I apologize for my voice, I've been fighting a little bit of a bug, but that doesn't matter. What matters is what we're gonna do today. And we're gonna take a look at a very unique unit, this right here, guys. Now you may be looking at that and be like, oh, it's just a Crosley or a Victrola. That's an all-in-one unit, I've seen it a million times. Actually, this is a very rare unit you've never seen before, I can almost guarantee you. However, you might have seen it on some very early episodes of Recordology. We featured this on and off, but we've never taken a close look at this unit, which is very, very unique. Not only are we going to take a quick review of it, we're also going to listen to it, and we're going to tear it apart and see what's inside. It's going to be a fun show, guys. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to Recordology. Hey guys, I just want to let you know that I am going to be going live this Wednesday. So for Recordology Express, which is our small midweek show, I will be going live. I don't always do that. So if you're watching this show after this Wednesday, um, then stay tuned for uh, a Recordology Express of some sort. But for this particular one, and sometimes we go live. So I'm looking forward to talking with all you guys, meeting you, uh, answering any questions. We'll listen to records. Just have fun. So don't forget to join us. It's going to be a good time. All right, guys, here it is. It is an Encore all-in-one unit, and it is super cool. Now, Encore is a brand that you're not going to see a lot of places because they work exclusively with resale catalogs like Finger Hut and other places. So you don't see them, you're not going to see it in a store. It's not going to pop up as much. I don't know who makes this. Spinning it around on the back here, let's take a look. It's got a nice finished back which as you guys know, if you've seen my other early all-in-one reviews, you know that's one of the things I look for is, is the back finished, and this one is. But let's take a look at the label, see if we can get any more info. Yeah, it doesn't really give us much more info. And you know, a lot of these units are you know made by companies in China, and then they're rebranded, and uh, the rebranding company will put their own labels on it. So it's really hard to see you know, who makes it just by looking on the back. Anyway, there's a statement about them using you know sustainably sourced wood, and you know basics on the unit frequency range, uh, stereo, turntable, CD, cassette player, AM, FM radio. It is unique that it has AM, FM radio because a lot of these only have the FM these days, but not any clues back here as to the manufacturer. The whole back of it is vented, which is kind of interesting. So as we take it apart, we'll find out what's back there. Okay, so it's got the standard automatic side loading tape player, and I think these are really good. Um, it doesn't have the Dolby noise reduction because Dolby doesn't license that technology anymore. Uh, so it's going to have a naturally high bias, but with Dolby recorded tapes, that's actually going to give you really good sound. So it's a very decent, it's a very good tape player. So you can obviously just insert the tape to play it. You can push this button in halfway to fast forward and then push it in all the way to pull the tape out. And then if you want the other side, you flip it over like that. And that way they save money on cost by only having a one-way motor. They don't need a reverse motor. So that cuts down on price. That's why they do it. But it's a very good tape player. And I, like I said, I've used this almost daily playing tapes and it works really, really good. Okay guys, um, here's the front of the unit. You've got your stereo speakers with that vintage cloth grill. Uh, there is wood in here, so you can't like push it all the way in. Not that you would, but um, it's got really nice details if you look closely. Like the inside of this is painted black. Um, this is obviously all a real wood veneer. Um, this kind of gold look front panel here is nice. It's plastic, but you know, it's still good. Uh, we've got the radio dial right here. Um, yeah, and all of your transport controls for your CD are here. Your auxiliary input's right here, so if you want to hook up your phone to it. It's got a headphone jack, which works really good right there. CD drawer, uh, once it's in CD mode. I listen to CDs on this thing all the time. Uh, very solid. The drawer is a good, sturdy drawer. Um, everything's been super solid. I haven't had any issues with this whatsoever. It very easily fills up a medium to large size room comfortably with audio. These are full range speakers, so you're going to get your mids, your highs, and your lows represented fine. And it's all by this brand right here, Encore. Again, a brand you're not going to see a lot, but it's definitely good stuff. These knobs have good drag on them. They feel like they're, you know, weighted and have good quality. Um, I do like the finishing touches on this unit a lot. One of the touches that I really like is this wood trim along the bottom here. This is super slick and it's well polished and I think it's just really well designed and really well put together. Okay guys, let's take a look under the hood. You'll see a little bit of schmutz right here. I made the mistake of doing a project on top of there and got some glue. My fault. Um, Alright, so we got a metal hinge right there and uh, 
catch, I guess you would call it. Um, now under here, you're gonna see a fairly typical uh, type of assembly in terms of the actual turntable mechanism, uh, but this is a really good one. It's worked really, really well. Uh, we got the 45 RPM spacer over here. Uh, we've got the full-size platter with the rubber nubs. We've got the spring-loaded counterbalance. It's a three-speed turntable, so it's gonna play all three speeds. Let's give it a listen and see how it sounds. I'm gonna plug this directly into the video feed. So if you put your headphones on, it'll be as though you are listening directly to this unit plugged into the front of it. So let's give it a good listen. Okay guys, for this test, we're gonna play a 45. I've been kind of in like this 80s mood lately, so we're gonna play a little bit more 80s music if you don't mind. And again, you're gonna hear this directly. So you know the sound is good, um, you know the platter doesn't have very much wobble in it. It's pretty sturdy you guys, this is a good unit. This is a great entry level player, it's not going to damage your vinyl, it's going to track about 5 grams or thereabouts, it's not going to do any damage. It may wear records out faster than super high end ones, but it's not going to damage anything. What you hear now is just the sound of the record with no amplification on it whatsoever. Um, one thing I do not care for about this turntable is it does not have a cueing lever, so you have to be able to raise and lower the stylus. And if you have shaky hands as I do, uh, that can be kind of tricky. So that is one thing that isn't so hot. But um, everything else is super good. I love the look of it, I love the design. Sounds great, it's rugged, it's a workhorse. It'll get the job done. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. And it's smaller than other all-in-one units, specifically vertically. I mean, it's got a full-size bladder, a little bit of a cutout in the back, which is typical, but it's more squat than a lot of other units out there. So it's kind of interesting. Okay, guys, now let's take it apart, see what's inside. Okay, guys, before you do anything like this, I wouldn't recommend you do anything like this because you're gonna avoid any warranty. It's dangerous, you could get shocked. It's a high likelihood that you know, you're gonna have extra parts when you're done and it's not gonna work when you put it back together. So with all of that said, I would recommend you don't do it. Just watch somebody, somebody like me, watch an idiot like me do it on YouTube and that way you save yourself the trouble. Uh, but definitely make sure that you unplug the thing, okay? Unplug. All right, so taking our 45 spacer off. The first thing you're gonna do is remove what's called a circlip. And I want to thank one of my viewers, and I don't know the name of the viewer who told me the name of this thing. It's the little clip that goes around the spindle down on the platter. And it goes right down there. It's really hard to get on and off, and it's not you know fun to watch somebody mess with it. So to save you that trouble, I've taken it off. Basically, it holds the platter in place, so if it's carried upside down or anything, it doesn't fall apart. With the sir clip removed, you now should be able to lift up on the platter. So we're gently lifting on the platter. And you know, it might be a good idea actually. Oops. Make sure that clip is on. It might be a good idea actually to have this transport screw raised, therefore locking this in a little bit more of a firm position. And like we've covered on another video, you just screw this counterclockwise and that makes everything stiff and rigid. It's like shipping mode, but it'll make it easier for you. Um, because the suspension that is in there for the stability of the record and the sound quality um, can kind of play against you when you're trying to unscrew things. Okay, so gently uh, lift up on the platter like this. Um, when I say gently, you're not gonna break anything. But once we lift this up, you're gonna see something. So right here is the inner platter, I guess you would call it, and that is where the belt, because this is a belt driven turntable, attaches to the platter, and then the other end down there to the motor mount, which we're going to take a closer look at. So once you get it up, you can lift it up, and there you go. There's the bottom of the platter. Um, you can see it's got a metal insert into a plastic body, and we can set that aside, and here is the belt. It's a rubber belt. So belt driven turntables are um, less expensive to make. Um, they have better sound isolation, so that's actually a good thing. And just by doing that, you guys, we can see a whole lot. So let's take a look inside. Okay, guys, just by taking that off, we can see a lot of stuff. So here is what looks like the main printed circuit board. So that's gonna have you know most of the functionality that relates to the uh, unit itself in terms of switching inputs, volume control. That's why it's close proximity to the front panel up here. Um, right here, we have an interesting device. Um, people that are, you know, electronics majors are going to know this stuff right off the bat. I don't actually. 
Um, I'm thinking this might have to be something to do with the antenna, um, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not going to go ahead and take apart all of these mechanisms over here um, because we've actually covered that when we took apart an all in or we took apart a suitcase player, and you can kind of see what those look like. I am going to take off the back panel and the bottom so we can kind of see what things look like from that side. But so far, I see the tape mechanism is over there. I see the main PCB right here, but let's see what's under it. Let's see what's in the back. All right, guys, after closer inspection of the back, I actually don't think I'm going to take the back panel off, but I am going to take the bottom panel off because this looks to be a lot more straightforward. I mean, I shouldn't even have to take the feet off. Um, I'm just going to take this panel, which, you know, sits below those feet. Um, this is really interesting. The bottom of this thing almost looks like solid wood. Um, I see a couple pieces right there. You just heard the sound of my circlip falling off the counter. Um, some glue and paint. There's a staple there. So I don't know. I mean, it's probably a veneer um, in all honesty, but I don't know. Let's see here. So I'm going to go ahead and take these screws off and let's see what we find inside. All right, guys. And there is the final screw. All right. That should open now. Let's see what's... All right. Lifts off pretty easy. <laughs> awesome. I love it when there's more stuff blocking the way. Okay. Let's see what we can see peeking around these nooks and crannies. Okay. So here's a speaker. Um, six ohms, three watts. Um, that is the back of it, obviously. I don't see any brand name. XF, I'm not sure what that is exactly. Uh, there is another PCB over here. Um, let's see if we see anything on it. I'm not sure what components uh, power off of this, but the fact that it's got clips on there, do you see these clips? That is a good sign of quality versus just like hot glue. Some of these types of units will just have like stuff hot glued in. So the fact that it's actually got removable clips to me is a sign of quality. Um, I'm gonna look over here through this hole. Uh, what, it looks like a that's a mech, that's a pulley for the cassette tape mechanism. Uh, obviously, a tape mechanism is belt driven, like all tape mechanisms are for the most part. There's the motor for the turntable, and a peek of the inside wood structure. You know that looks like some solid wood bracing in there to me, you guys. That doesn't look like just cheap veneer. Maybe I'm wrong, but doesn't that look like solid wood? And it's reinforced in the corners. That's a good sign. That looks like there actually is some stamped on there, but I can't quite read it from here. Over here is the power supply. And that is just uh, correlating, obviously, to the power supply out there. So here's our antenna wire. So we can kind of follow that. Look at this. There's like a twisty tie, like a grocery store twisty tie. And then looks like, where does that go? The antenna goes down there somewhere. All right, guys, holding it open at an angle right here. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at the tape mechanism there. Uh, fully automatic tape mechanism, which is pretty cool engineering if you think about it. There's one of the um, points where the uh, suspension is provided for the turntable mechanism. Um, there is the center spindle for the turntable. It's got some white petroleum grease on there for lubricant. There's the pulley for the motor that attaches to the belt. Again, to my untrained eye, it all looks like high quality stuff. I mean, I don't see a lot of janky, you know, assembly. It looks like uh, this is a quality product. And it's been a quality product for me. I've had this thing for many years now. Here's another view of the turntable motor. So there's an H and an L control. So I guess it's a high speed, low speed control. So you could, you could adjust the, uh, maybe it's high or low voltage control. So that's kind of interesting. I wonder if you can make adjustments there to turntable speed. I'm not sure. All right, guys, here's the main PCB again behind the control panel. Kind of looking up there, you can see that far end speaker up there. Here's the motor for the tape player, which I think is kind of interesting. You can see some branding on there. Not sure what company it is. It's hard to see on the screen here, but interesting. And there you go, guys, a partially disassembled all-in-one unit. And now you know what they're like on the inside. And now it's time for Comment of the Week. <gasps> yeah. All right, guys, and for Comment of the Week, we are going with this one, which simply says, the record player is great. And I agree. And thank you very much for the comment. If you want to have your comment featured in the Comment of the Week, comment throughout the week. That's all there is to it. Uh, I like to stay involved uh, as much as I can throughout the week and uh, will respond when I can. I'll favorite my favorite ones. I'll give thumbs up and all that good stuff. And you know, if you're having questions as you're 
you know, working through things as you're discovering things. And uh, if there's anything that I can do in terms of helping you or any answers I can provide, I'll do so. So definitely stay engaged in the comments. This is a two-way street. This is an ongoing conversation, an adventure that we're having together. So I look forward to seeing you there. All right, guys, there it is. I hope you had fun. We tore it down. We looked at how it worked. Very surprised by the quality here, you guys. It's not bad at all. This is a quality unit. It's built to last. I've had it for, gosh, three years now, uh, just about as long as that Vibe unit, and it's worked phenomenally. I keep it in my office, and it works really, really, really well. I listen to it every day, especially the tape. Ironically, that's what I listen to the most on this particular unit. Um, and CD as well, and radio. So it's a great all-in-one unit. It's perfect if you don't have or don't want or don't need a fully featured stereo system because this is an all-in-one unit. It does everything for you. It's got good sound, good features, quality build, and I think you're gonna be very happy with it if you want one. I do not believe they're sold new on Amazon. However, I believe you can buy them used there. I'll put a link in the description. Um, however, I'll put some links to other places where you can buy them new. Finger Hut is one of the places. They work exclusively with certain resale establishments. And, uh, but I'll try to find a place where you can get one too because I would recommend it. It's a great all-in-one unit. One of the very best ones I've ever seen. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Happy record hunting. Now you can follow Recordology on Instagram and Twitter. Follow us at Recordology1938 today. Make sure to subscribe to both Instagram and Twitter because we will feature unique content on each platform. Happy record hunting now on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm not very good at this. Neither am I. Okay, what can we lose? Thank you for watching Recordology Deluxe. Don't forget to subscribe and watch our midweek show Recordology Express on Wednesdays. Sometimes I feel